Have you ever wanted to fly around like the Green Goblin and just devastate everything in the game? Maybe you just want to fly into the air and completely destroy any Lionel you see in your sight. Or maybe you want to lead a robot army to take down Gleox. I don't know what suits your fancy, but today we're gonna make it all happen. Today we're gonna be going over some completely overpowered Zonite builds, as well as how to actually power them by getting the entire Zonite armor set. If you enjoy building in Tears of the Kingdom, you absolutely need to get this armor set because it's essentially going to double the capacity of your batteries by using less energy while you're using your Zonite builds. For instance, using this cannon sword naked, we're going to use over two bars worth of energy just to fire at one time. With the Zonite armor equipped, however, we're going to use just one cell from our battery, a substantial improvement. First, we're going to go over how to get this armor set, and then we're going to go into detail how to create some amazing builds in Tears of the Kingdom to completely destroy everything in the game. The first piece of armor is going to take a little bit to get to. You're going to want to launch yourself out of the <laughs> slope sky view tower, and you're going to want to land on the North Nekluda Sky Archipelago. We need to make our way over here, so we're going to need to use a Zonai device to be able to get here. There's a couple of different ways, but this is going to be the fastest and probably most efficient way to get up there. The best build for this is just going to be two fans and a pair of handles. Depending on how much energy you have, I definitely recommend bringing some large Zonai charges. And we need to make our way all the way up to this large rock structure in the sky. Alternatively, if you already have the Zora armor, you can actually swim up this waterfall that's right here. When you're on this device, make sure you don't tilt back too far because you can actually fall off. But we're gonna go about this with the assumption that you don't have a ton of energy and can't make it all the way up to the top. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get to this first level, which is right over here. And you can see there's this little ring next to the trees. Go ahead and just touch this ring. And this is gonna activate a bunch of updrafts for us. Just jump into one of these and activate your glider. Just continue following these updrafts all the way to the top. And then you're going to get to the spot with a hole in it. Now, at this point, I highly recommend if you have the glide armor equipping it. If you don't have the glide armor, check out my video on it. I'll leave a link in the description. And we need to drop down this laser beam filled hole. <laughs> you don't want to use your glider for this. So you will have to dive. And this is what's great about the glide armor is you can kind of like levitate. And then you can dive once you see a safe spot to dive through it. If you hit a laser beam that's going to happen and it's going to actually block your path forward. So that's why you don't want to hit a laser beam. If you do hit a laser beam, you're going to have to open up your glider and reset. Just try not to hit a laser beam. Just take your time going down this, especially if you have the glide suit. There's no reason to not just take your time with it. There's a lot of laser beams. It's kind of crazy to look at, but once you get down here, you're going to see a shrine that you can activate. Activating the shrine isn't part of this, but what we need to do is we need to get inside of that right there. There's a couple different ways we can go about this, but if you hold the button as if you're throwing your weapon, push up on the D-pad, you can use like a water thing or an ice fruit or really anything. We just need to throw something at the ground right here. And then we need to jump on top of that. Then you're going to activate ascend. And you're going to pop yourself inside this little room. Once you're out, you're going to see a chest right here. Open that bad boy up. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We've got the Zonite Waste Guard. For the next piece of armor, we're going to head to Lindor's Brow Skyview Tower, which is northwest of central Hyrule. And we're going to land on this location right here, which is actually Courage Island, where you get one of the pieces of the flight suit. You'll notice if you're facing the shrine here, where we need to go is actually way up there. So we're going to use our favorite Zonite device. You can kind of see a theme here. Turns out you need Zonite stuff to get Zonite stuff. Be prepared for a hell of a flight. You're most likely going to need at least one or two of the large Zonite charges. It's also going to be cold up here, so having one to two pieces of cold armor is definitely going to help, or a cold resistance food. Once up here, you're going to head to this little Zonite ring. You're probably familiar with these by now. You'll also notice that gravity is completely different in this area. We're actually so high up that the way you're going to maneuver up here completely different. This device is actually going to drain the area of water. If you haven't gotten your Zora body armor yet, I would actually recommend collecting one of these fishes. If you pick up one of these ancient arowana, you can head to Zora's domain and talk to a green fish lady there to get a free piece of Zora armor. You might as well take advantage of all the other tasty little treats in this area as well. But where we actually need to go is to this tower with this light shooting into it. There's going to be a Zonai in front of it, so just take him out real quick and then head inside of this tunnel. You're going to need to either blow up this wall or knock it down with a giant rock hammer of some sort. And then we're just going to dive inside. Once inside, you're going to need to grab one of these mirrors. 
And we need to look for the next spot where this mirror needs to go. So you can kind of spin it around and there we go. You can see it kind of light up right there. That's the next spot that we need to go. You can just jump across, activate your glider. Then you're gonna wanna place this one over to the next, which is just across the way. And we can just jump across and use our glider just like we were before. And essentially we're kind of creating a loop with this. So this one we need to grab and rotate and place it facing the next one. And then once we're at this one, you're gonna notice that there's a wall. What we need to do is actually turn around a little bit and we need to shoot it back towards this room over here. Now we've got a light pointing down into this area. There's going to be a larger Azanite on the other side of this. So just be prepared for that. If you have a bomb arrow or anything like that, you can just shoot it down into its face. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And this bad boy is going to have a shield for us. So we can pick this up. So we wanna pick up this mirror shield. And what we're going to do is pull out our shield and then point it at the yellow part right here. And once you point it at that golden part, you're going to finish this puzzle. You're also going to notice that our treasure is right there. So you can run up, if you drop your shield, just pick that bad boy up. You can pick up the Zonite sword. I can show you a little fun trick with that too. And then you just use ascend to ascend right through this spot. And then inside of, and then inside of this lovely chest, is our Zonite Helm. So we're gonna head northeast of Central Hyrule to the Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower. Once you launch yourself out of this, make sure to hit your glider as quick as possible. We wanna land to this island just next to it. If you open up your menu, it's the Sokala Sky Archipelago. And we wanna land right here, so that way we don't have to fight that construct over there. Thankfully, there is already a build here with a bunch of Zonai devices around as well. If you don't wanna use a bunch more of your Zonai charges, you can add as many batteries to this as you want. And if you add a fan to the back of it, it's gonna help speed it up a little bit as well. Once you're ready, go ahead and hop on this. And where we need to go is actually up here. There's this cluster of islands with a ball above it. If you open your menu, it's gonna be over the little swirly bit of this island. And we don't need to go all the way up. We actually need to get to this bottom island Island here first. Unfortunately, you're probably still going to need to end up using at least one large Zonai charge or a bunch of smaller ones. As you fly over it, you're going to see another ring. That's actually where we need to go. There's also a shrine here that you can unlock too. Go ahead and touch this nasty little ring and it's going to activate all these little bouncy boys for us. Definitely activate this shrine just in case you screw something up. Just remember, you don't need to actually complete the shrines to unlock their fast travel part. Now where this one is positioned right now should actually be good enough for us to get up there. So all we need to do is wait for it to to activate then hop onto it and then it's going to launch us up to the next level activate your glider and then you want to land on this without dying Woo, that was close on each of these islands that you launch up to there's going to be some of these zanai dudes wanting to shoot you and on this island we need to actually rotate the bouncy thing so that way it's pointing towards this island that's up above it so on this island we need to rotate this again towards the island that's up above it so if we get it positioned right about there that should be good enough and prepare for a nice little ride now there's going to be another zanai device on this level as well but we need to actually move this out of the way too so what we need to do is attach a rocket to this and just kind of point it away from this island. You're gonna hit that rocket and you're gonna jump off of this because we don't wanna go for that ride. We just need to get it out of the way. And what we need to do here, whoa, don't yeet yourself like I did, be careful. So we need to spin this around so that way it's pointed towards the hole in the ball up there. Once you feel like you've got it in a good spot, all you need to do is just activate Ultra Hand, grab one of these blocks, and we're gonna put it on this right here. If you did a good job, it should launch all the way into the sky. We kind of watch it fall. If you miss, that's fine. You can keep doing this just a few times. But after an attempt or two, you should be able to get this block directly into that hole. Once that block goes in the hole, you're gonna have to launch yourself up there too. Make sure to activate your glider so that way you don't fly over it. And we're just gonna glide into this hole. Once inside, you're gonna find that block that you threw up here and you're gonna place it on this right here. This is gonna activate the ball so that way it spins. Once you've got the ball activated, head to one of these little pillars. Climb to the top of it. Make sure to regenerate a little bit of your stamina first or all of it. And then you're gonna ascend out of the ball. What we need to do now is actually look for another hole in this ball. So you can kind of glide off of it and follow its rotation and just kind of glide around it. Continue to keep gliding around it until you find the hole. And then once you do, just dive right into it. At the center of this ball is going to be our last piece the Zonite Shin Guards. Now let's get into some Zonai builds. We're gonna start with my favorite glider that you can really customize as much as you want. To build this, you're gonna need a steering stick, 
six fans, and at least two construction heads. You can get the fans and steering sticks over in Terrytown, and if you need a construction head, you can head out of the Typhlo Ruin Skyview Tower, and then fly over to this location right here for a construction head at Bravery Island. This is the basic form of what we're going to build without the sixth fan on there. The sixth fan can be placed in different spots to be able to manipulate how this actually flies. Otherwise, this is a really simple build. You put a steering stick on top of a fan, and then the fans behind the steering stick, all you do is just push up once on the d-pad to be able to give you an, a nice little rotation here this is going to give you your forward thrust and then these fans are placed perfectly flat so that way you get more lift then you're going to put your construction heads on the very end on each side now this sixth fan can be put on the very back like this this is going to provide you a little bit more speed and lift at the same time or it can be placed at the front to provide more lift, but it'll be a little bit slower, which actually means it might be better for combat this way. Before we start putting weapons on this thing, make sure that your construction head's eye is actually facing towards the front where the handlebars are pointed. If they're pointed towards the back, you're going to have a really bad time. With the steering handles, six fans, and two construction heads, you have room for 12 more items on this device. This can be any assortment of cannons and laser beams is what I would recommend. Just make sure they're balanced on both sides. For this particular build, I have four laser beams and two cannons on each side. And I think that works out pretty well. Although I think all laser beams is probably the most damage per second that you can do. With this build fully maxed out on weight, I definitely recommend putting the final fan on the very back like this. So that way you get the lift and extra speed. Cannons can be very dangerous on this as well, but it's a hell of a lot of fun. This next build I call the Lionel Killer 9000. It's probably one of my favorites and it's really simple to build. You're gonna need 14 beam emitters, two construction heads, a floating stone, a rocket, and something to build a roof. It can be two pieces of wood, it can be two pieces of stone, really whatever your heart desires. The only reason for that roof is if you're fighting a Lionel, they can't hit you with arrows from above. Now the way this works is when you spawn it into the world, you can use a scent to be able to get up inside of it. And then we can just quickly hit it with our weapon to be able to activate it. What's going to happen is it's going to fly up in the air above, and then from here it can just completely devastate anything below you. Now if you do run into any issues where it can't actually hit anything, you can actually use rewind on it, and you can get it to be lower in the air, so you just kind of use this rewind ability on it. And as it goes backwards, you can choose where you want to be, so that way if you need to be a little bit closer to something to be able to kill it, you can. Now, if you don't want to fly forward and up, you can also put the rocket just directly vertical and do the exact same thing to be able to get directly above something that is maybe just attacking you in that moment. You can also use this without getting on it. If you slap it and then make sure to run forward with it as well, as long as you're continuing to be able to run with it, it should stay above you. If it gets too far from you, then it's going to deactivate and fall out of the sky. So it's a little bit safer to use it while you're on it, but either way it works and it's pretty freaking awesome. 